my favorite things about biochemistry is there's no typical day. There's not even a typical biochemistry. If you want easy answers, biochemistry probably isn't for you. In fact, there's not even a simple answer to what biochemistry is. Biochemistry, it encompasses this vast array of techniques and experimental fields and subfields and areas. And really what unites biochemists is the desire to figure out why biological molecules are just so dang awesome and biological systems are so powerful. I mean, we can't even like recreate the power of biology in the lab. We're relying on like bacteria and things to do all of these different reactions for us. And a lot of the like industry and things like this is just trying to figure out how can we do something as well as these as these biological creatures are doing them. So what exactly is biochemistry? Basically, it's really hard to define because it's so many different things. And other than being united in that common question, really, there's not that much in common between a lot of the different techniques. And you might think that these people doing these different fields are going to be in like totally separate fields. But really, if you go to like a biochemistry meeting, you're going to see people who are doing all of these sorts of experiments. And often these labs are collaborating with one another because different labs will have different um, experimental expertise. And so some of the different techniques and kind of sub-disciplines that they might be doing are things like molecular biology. This is going to be like cloning and gene expression analysis. Um, maybe if you knock down a certain or knock out a certain gene, like CRISPR and stuff like this, what happens to the other genes? Um, so this is all of this would characterize as kind of like molecular biology work. Then there's protein biochemistry. This typically involves a lot of purifying proteins, um, maybe expressing and purifying them more commonly. So say sticking the instructions for making the proteins into another type of cell, like bacterial cells, getting those cells to make that protein and then purifying that out um, and characterizing the protein. So lots of kind of trying to figure out how to make these proteins happy and then how to figure out what these proteins like and don't like and how they behave. Some of the ways that we can study how they behave involve biophysical assays. These are things like binding assays. There's techniques like SBR and ITC, um, basically to measure how molecules behave and interact. And with this, we're typically dealing with really purified molecules often. Um, and so this goes back to the protein biochemistry and being able to express and purify these proteins, um, these sorts of things. We can also, some proteins are enzymes, and so they speed up or catalyze reactions. And so we can measure how fast and how well they speed up in these various reactions. Um, depending on their substrate, so what they're actually acting on, the conditions, the temperature, the pH, things like this. We can measure their activity. We can maybe make, make mutations, going back to kind of like molecular biology to introduce mutations, then protein biochemistry to purify the proteins. Then we can measure how those mutations impact both the binding as well as the activity. So all of these can kind of like go together as well as if you want to get a look at the protein you can or whatever molecule you're looking at, structural biology, techniques like X-ray crystallography, cryo-EM or NMR to get like a sort of look at these molecules. If we want to kind of better manipulate the molecules, this is where like chemical biology can come in. So chemical biology um, is kind of like the side of biochemistry that's more chemistry. -y. And so biochemistry is often more on the biology side of bi the biology chemistry divide, whereas chemical biology is more on the chemistry side, but really they kind of go together. And so you can use chemical biology and biochemistry and biochemistry and chemical biology. There's not this strict divide between the two, but often with chemical biology, we're either studying how chemicals interact with biological molecules, so maybe studying pharmaceutical drugs, how they're interacting with various biological targets, maybe how you can modify those drugs in order to interact differently with those targets. Maybe you're incorporating structural biology into that to try to better understand the binding sites, to better characterize um, and modify these molecules, to interact differently with the molecules, and then study using biophysics and things to better study how these molecules are interacting. But with chemical biology, what's special about it is that we're somehow using chemistry that's not the typical chemistry of these cells. And so these cells are doing their own chemistry and then we can kind of incorporate 
other sorts of chemistry in there. So things like click chemistry, where we're actually introducing various um, compounds to like copper reactions and things, basically introducing chemical reactions that wouldn't normally happen. We can also introduce unnatural amino acids and things like this to make designer proteins that have specific groups and chemical like ornaments that are not found in normal cells. So th this would all kind of go under the chemical biology umbrella. But again, this is incorporating these techniques from these more fundamental techniques. Another type of kind of area of biochemistry is things like proteomics. So when you see omics, that think big data sets. And so this is going to be where you have these big data sets. And with proteomics, what you're doing is you're measuring the proteomes. So you're measuring what proteins are being made through with mass spectrometry. You can also measure like what modifications are present on those proteins. There are also various techniques where you can kind of see what proteins are bound to what other proteins various things like this. There are also other types of omics like metabolomics, measuring metabolites to study things like metabolism. So the making and breaking of molecules, various signaling molecules and things like this. And also here like transcriptomer, transcript omics, which is measuring RNA transcripts, various forms of omics. So obviously one person can't do all this. Even one lab can't do all this. And so biochemistry is really strengthened by collaboration between labs that have these different expertises. So from lab to lab, what people are doing is going to very, very wildly. And even within a lab, the different people in the lab are going to be doing very different things. Some of this is going to be because these people come with different skill sets, especially when it comes to postdocs, so postdoc is where basically you've done your PhD in a lab, and now you're going to another lab to try to gain more expertise, learn more about a specific area, maybe pick up a new skill. These people are going to be coming from all sorts of different backgrounds, and therefore they're going to be bringing new skills to the lab and being able to train other people in the lab on those techniques. And they're also going to be able to use those techniques that maybe the lab didn't have before even if they're there to kind of learn new techniques, they're often still going to be using some of the older techniques that they have. And so they're going to be more comfortable with various techniques, things like this. Bottom line is the lab's techniques, the techniques that they use can change over time and the different people in the lab, because they come with these different skill sets, they're going to be doing different things. As I talked about how you could have collaboration between labs, but you can also have a lot of sorts of variety within a lab. And so our lab, for example, we have people with chemical biology backgrounds, with chemistry backgrounds, with biology backgrounds, with biochemistry backgrounds. And having people from all different backgrounds, everybody in the lab is doing, can be doing very different things, but we really thrive by learning from one another and by kind of taking advantage of the different skills that we all have. So this, the, the skills, the people in the lab are going to change over time. And so kind of the experiments that the lab does is going to change over time. But typically what unites the lab's focus is going to be a common question or questions or research areas. Now, each person in the lab typically has their own specific question that they're trying to answer, their own specific research avenue. But then the lab will have some overall like fundamental theme, uniting themes. And so the research that's done in the lab is going to be towards answering questions about those themes. Now, sometimes the research focus of the lab can change over time, at least, um, sometimes dramatically, but often more in more subtle ways as the research takes you to areas that you wouldn't expect. But typically the lab is funded to be working on these specific areas. And so a lab is typically going to focus on answering questions in a couple different areas. But these areas are going to differ between the different labs. And so the different people in different labs are going to be answering different questions. So even if they're using the same technique, they're going to be doing answer, trying to answer very different questions. And so they're going to be doing very different things. So different people, different labs, different things, same people or different people, same lab, different things. And even the same person, same lab, different things, because what you're gonna do over time is going to vary very greatly. Now, part of this is because 
there's only so many of this one type of experiment you can do before you've kind of exhausted it. Well, not really exhausted it, but you use the technique to try to find an answer. And then once you find that answer, well, now it's time to turn to a different technique to find a different answer or to answer a different question. And often that different question is going to be posed by the answers you get from that first technique. Even if you're trying to answer the same question, it can help to answer it with a couple different techniques in order to really cement the fact, the, the, the prove that this is a real thing and not just an artifact, that, that one technique. Um, so kind of having these orthogonal avenues to describe, to um, find the same answer. So basically these two inter, two different methods at coming to the same answer really strengthen the fact that that is the answer. So you're gonna be doing different types of experiments and you often what you'll do is you'll be going through spurts of time where you're doing the same experiment over and over. I mean, like slightly changing the conditions, or maybe you're just doing it over and over because you're trying to optimize it. And then finally, you get to do the actual Davis collection. But um, so you do that experiment over and over and over and you think, oh, my God, all I ever do is this one experiment. All I ever do is slop plot assays. All I ever do is Western blots. And then you'll be going through a period where all I ever do is protein purification. All I ever do is this. All I ever do is this. Um, and then you might be like, oh my God, I want to do something else. And then, but then you actually do get to do something else. And so you're often going through these spurts where you're doing one experiment a lot and then another experiment a lot and then back to the first experiment a lot or even a third experiment a lot. So there's a lot of variety. Um, but during certain periods, you might be doing the same type of experiment over and over and over again. Um, so sometimes you can get exhausted with the one experiment, but there's always a different type of experiment right around the corner. Unfortunately, for some reason, it seems like in the lab, people like always do this, need the same equipment at the same time. There'll be these per periods where like everybody is needing the ultra centrifuge at the same time, and then no one will be needing it for weeks. It's probably just like a bias of like remembering it that way. But yeah, anyway. The best thing about biochemistry is that it provides a lot of room for creativity. So often people think of scientists as kind of like cold and calculating, but really creativity is a huge part in the life of a biochemist because there's no just like recipe formula to follow for answering biochemical questions because biochemical questions are so varied and biochemical molecules are so varied. And you're going to have to kind of create the experiments design experiments to answer the questions that you want to answer because that's what's great is that people aren't asking the same questions and so if people aren't asking the same questions they're not going to have that like a formula out there to answer that question and so you get to be creative you get to learn about how these molecules work and then kind of use that knowledge of how they're working to manipulate them to better make sure that you can do these reactions under conditions that these molecules are going to be happy taking Finding the, um, finding the weak spots of these molecules, their vulnerabilities. What can they not stand the cold? Can they not stand the hot? Can they not stand the salt? Trying to figure out what conditions these molecules like and then how we can better understand the activity and measure the activities of these molecules, things like this. Really getting to be creative about how we're studying these interactions, taking um, into account the, each of these molecules' unique properties. And so this is where it's really helpful to have a solid fundamental understanding of biochemistry, of organic, bi organic chemistry, at least the basics, biology, all of these things, having that really fundamental understanding, being able to think kind of like a molecule, I find is really, really helpful to when you're just designing experiments, when you're experimenting, really to think about what's going on at the molecular level in order to better understand, in order to better characterize what's going on, and in order to be better on being able to show what's going on and not just imagine, imagine it in your head. So there's no typical work and there's also no typical day in the life of a training biochemist. Your time is typically going to be split, split between wet work. So kind of what we've been talking about, all these like at the bench experiments, we're doing things hand on. And again, the nature of these experiments is going to vary greatly depending on which lab you're in, the questions that are being pursued, what type of equipment that lab has, that's a big thing. Your institution might not have the, like say NMR equipment or the cryo-EM equipment that you need to do certain experiments. So you'll either have to collaborate with another lab or use equipment at another 
of another lab or institution. And so often there are like beam lines and things for crystallography, where there's these sorts of common resources that people can use if they don't have that fancy dancy equipment at their institution. So some of the times you might see those flashy papers come out with those big new techniques, maybe like something that's really high throughput. So you can use tons and tons of samples at once. Problem is most of the time these are these like one system that this lab developed and it's super duper cool, but only their lab has it. Um, and so that's one of the bad things about um, those cutting edge research techniques is that those typically aren't available for most people. But we do have those fundamental techniques that like anybody can use. You can collaborate with the labs that do have the equipment. And then there are also like shared resources that people can use even if their lab doesn't have some sort of equipment. And although biochemistry, you might think of it as like super glamorous and high tech, really a lot of the time and some of my favorite things are like old school methods that use equipment that looks like it came from like 1920 something or whatever. And for all you know, it could have. Um, and this equipment seems to like last forever while all that newer stuff is breaking. Um, but anyway, there's some really like classic biochemistry that we still do today. Um, and so old school techniques can be really fun. Um, you don't need high tech equipment and you can get some cool answers. So wet work, this is basically all that hands-on stuff. And then there's dry work. So some, some biochemists just do dry work. So they just do computer work and just like analyze data. But even if you do mostly wet work, you're still going to generate data that you're going to have to analyze. And so you might alternate between periods of like wet work intensive periods where you're just collecting a ton of data. And sometimes you can be collecting data so fast that it sometimes just like piles up and you're like, oh my God, when am I gonna get around to actually analyzing this? Because there's so many different questions I need to ask. But it's really important to take time and analyze things along the way. And then you might have a period that's really dry work intensive where you're really just focusing on the computational analysis of all that data you collected. That, so that's your kind of like research work. Um, and then there's a lot of non-research work so meetings, there's a lot of meetings. These can include group meetings. So typically like every week you'll have a group meeting. This can alternate between journal club and experimental like research reports. So it either it could be like an every other week um, in terms of one week's journal club, one week is someone presenting their research progress, or you could have it where you have one person do journal club and one week person do research talk every week. That's how it is in this lab. Um, and this can be these are really helpful, give you a chance to kind of learn more about what's going on in the lab, although you're also talking to your lab mates throughout the week. Um, and really just get a progress update, being able to give them feedback. Um, they get to get experience of presenting their work, et cetera. Sometimes labs have smaller group meetings too. So we have like subgroup meetings where basically half the lab is focused on one area. We'll be we'll meet with um, our boss, our PI, our principal investigator every other week and have a more informal meeting where we all discuss our progress and kind of troubleshoot with one another. Um, and so that's really helpful that you might have like one-on-one -on -one meetings with your advisor, things like this. Then you have the more formal educational things like courses if you're in school. Um, you might have seminars. There's tons and tons of seminars, so many seminars you can't make it all, um, but you want to kind of keep an eye out for those seminars or those invited speakers on cool topics. Um, then there's also conferences where you can go, go to various conferences. Maybe you get to present your work. Maybe you're just learning from other people's work. These are really great opportunities to present your work, to hear about other people's work, and to network. Um, then reading papers. Um, this is really, really important to stay up to date on the literature and to get practice reading papers. It's a really acquired skill. It takes a lot of practice, but it does get easier. And then in addition to learning your yourself being learning, you are helping teach and mentor others, especially as you move up in kind of the, the hierarchy of a lab. So as you go from being a grad student to a postdoc and a postdoc to like a senior scientist or whatever, if you want to do that, um, basically you're going to have more mentoring responsibilities where you're going to be training other people in the lab. But even if you're a grad student, you're still going to be training other grad students. You're still going to be training other postdocs. So I've learned so much from the grad students in my lab. And I'm really, really grateful for that. And I'm really, really grateful for opportunities to get to mentor other grads, to mentor grad students in the lab and things like this. So these can be through like formal things, like you are assigned this rotation student, you are the mentors of this rotation student. And so that's really cool. But then there's also just like the casual, like one, like one-offs, like you're just in the lab and 
hey, can you show me how to do this technique? Or how I can't get this to work. Do you have any ideas? And so there's this like teaching and mentoring that goes on between the different people in the lab because these people are going to have these different backgrounds, these different interests. And so we're really all able to learn from one another. And then we're also able to learn from our PI, our advisor, who is really the main mentor, um, the overseeing mentor, who really plays a key role in bringing things together in the lab and establishing a lab culture and really this environment where everybody feels comfortable to ask questions and to learn from one another. And so I feel really grateful to be in the Fumichi Mori lab at UCSF, and I really love it here. And I love the opportunities to learn from my colleagues as well as help teach my colleagues. Um, and I love the diversity of our lab and how it encompasses so many different aspects of biochemistry. Um, and I really love biochemistry. So hopefully this helps you better understand what biochemistry is and what's kind of involved in being a biochemist and how this can be a very diverse thing. Um, and there's a lot of different things that you can do and how it really is this creative endeavor. And so don't think of it as being this by the textbook type of thing. It's really this area for creativity and exploration. So really, it's just this group of people, this field of research that's interested in answering this question of, well, how are biological systems so darn cool?